everyone, Derek Johnson with Detango.com. We are at Mobile World Congress 2019 in Barcelona. We're actually at the Cinch uh, trade show booth here on the floor, and I'm here with Nick Lane from Mobile Squared. First, Nick, what is Mobile Squared? Uh, we're a UK-based research analyst company specializing in business messaging, looking primarily at A2P, SMS, starting to look at other, other areas around WhatsApp, Apple, for example, and looking at what is the opportunity for operators, for brands, how they can utilize these channels. Okay, so the thing, we've done a ton of RCS demos, filmed them here at Mobile World Congress, and the question has been, how many of my customers can actually interact with an RCS experience with the, you know, with the mobile phone? In the United States, most of our viewers are from the United States. Do you have an answer for us now and then in the future? What do those adoption numbers look like? So we think at the, the moment the adoption number is very low, but that's going to grow. We expect it to grow to about 70 million people by the end of this year. And it should reach about 130, 140 million by about 2023. And that's based primarily on just Android devices. So that would be almost 100% penetration of Android. Now, a lot of people here have asked about the iPhone. Will iPhone support uh, RCS? And most importantly, will it support RCS as an A to P, so application to person? What's your take and what do you feel right now is happening? Apple are interested. Uh, we know that much. Um, there's a meeting that took place yesterday between Apple and the operators. The outcome of that we don't know. But prior to yesterday, our understanding was that they are closely watching the markets where the GSMA are turning into gold markets. So you've got all of the main operators having deployed a P2P uh, RCS network. Um, so Apple really, what they want to achieve is interoperability between those networks. Once they have that, then they will consider rolling out a P2P offering so Apple consumers can communicate and chat with Android. We don't expect that to be extended into the A2P world. So, you know, if a brand still wants to communicate with, um, you know, both Android and, uh, and, and, and iOS users, we'd expect that to be effectively two separate campaigns. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So the numbers that you presented, I think we'll throw them up on the screen sometime. They don't include uh, Apple A to P messaging, but you do think maybe there's a chance for P to P. I've heard uh, from a lot of people, there's a lot of confusion between what is the difference between A to P and P to P, and which one do you see being adopted more quickly in the United States for RCS? So P to P is just where you've got consumer talk to consumer. Okay. So in terms of the interoperability between Apple and, and Android, it just means that there's a better experience for the consumer. So right now, you know, there's a figure that's been banded around that 60% of all uh, iMessages bounce back onto SMS. So obviously Apple are keen to avoid that experience. It's a quite a negative experience. So they want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So having that interoperability should remove probably, I don't know, probably about 20, maybe even 10% or drop that down, so it should be very powerful. Same way that Google really doesn't have its own messaging platform. This is what one of the main reasons that they're doing this. But, you know, they want to make sure that they have that, that experience to make sure that their customers, their users stay, you know, kind of loyal to the Android brand. At the moment, they don't have that. A lot of users are migrating over onto iPhone. So, in terms of the A to P, that's really the, how the operators or the ecosystem effectively will monetize this. So it, it takes it to something called U, U, uh, Universal Profile 2.0 effectively, and that's where operators roll out something called a map, their message as a platform, and that's really how they can then communicate and send out a much richer experience, which is when something like RCS should, if not compete, maybe become a superior channel to something like WhatsApp. And can consumers expect that most likely on their phones uh, or brands that uh, P to P will come first and then A to P will come second? Yeah, absolutely. So operators are rolling that out. They want P to P to kind of start to get that scale. And then gradually what you're now seeing, especially in the US, for example, you're getting Samsung deploying uh, its kind of next iteration of software which is this Universal Profile 2.0. Anyone that buys a Samsung device now, for example, on AT&T, that will automatically be embedded on the device. But for slightly older devices, that has to be downloaded by the consumer. 
Where do we sit in terms of the international scene? Is the United States, are their adoption numbers greater, let's say at the end of this year, than in Africa or Egypt or Asia? Where do we sit as the United States? Because I know we have a lot of iPhone users that would affect the numbers. Where do we sit in the United States compared to all the other countries? The US accounts for about 10% of total users. So we've got the figure of, at the end of 2018, at about 200 million RCS users. So that's P2P. Okay. So this is just people communicating with other people on RCS devices. In the US, I think we've got that figure at about 35, 40 million right now. So it's okay figure. You know, I mean, it's still bigger than WhatsApp is in the US right now. So to put that into some kind of context, but it will grow and it will grow very fast. What will happen is once you've got that P2P, that user base, the A to P will, will kind of grow almost kind of exponentially as a kind of subsection of that. So ultimately, you should have 100% of RCS devices will be A to P and therefore monetizable. And uh, you were talking before, you're coming out with a new um, research report specifically for brands. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I mean, what we've done so far today is trying to get an understanding of RCS. It's very murky. <laughs> we speak to so many different companies, so many different views. It's really conflicting, contradictory. And, you know, it's taken us 15 months to get where we are, just to kind of under have a kind of base level understanding. But then to kind of send that out to brands, we know that having had these conversations, they want to know what the reach is, what that reach will be in, in, in relation to, it could be smartphone or, you know, kind of potential total population penetration. So we'll be looking at that, but we'll also be looking at the engagement points. So it's not just about sending out a message, it's about chat. We're looking, we've got a lot of research which we've kind of, will apply to our, our the brand-based um, reports that we'll be doing that show the level of engagement, what type of engagement people can expect with um, consumers, and we'll be able to split it out by demographics and by gender. Everybody we talk to here at Mobile World Congress, if they are in mobile messaging, has said 2019 is the year of RCS. Do you think this year is the year of RCS? Are you going to go on record right now and say that, or is it next year? And where do you see that kind of tipping point being? I think this will be the year where RCS gets a foothold. I don't think it'll be the year of, S of RCS. I think that could be next year. But I think this year it's all about getting certain markets to go live with the main operators. So you've got Japan already, UK will come, US is coming, I think France, Germany and Italy should all come in the next few months. And I think once you come to see these markets live or you start to get some scale, more brands will start to use the platform. And once you've got that kind of traction happening in at least one or two markets, primarily I think the UK and the US, then we'll see huge adoption. And we think enterprises will then start to move over and really kind of explore how they can use the channel. So primarily, most likely, next year will be the 2020. 2020, yeah. 2020 you've heard it here. Yeah. Um, the last one is where can people find more information about yourself, the reports that you guys offer? Uh, what's your website? So it is www.mobilesquared.co.uk. Perfect. That was a, a lot of information. Hopefully, we'll put some uh, kind of visuals up here so you can see that. Again, we're at the Cinch booth uh, with Mobile Squared. Check them out, mobilesquared.co.uk, right? That's us. Perfect. And we have Nick Lane. And again, my name is Derek Johnson with Tatango.com. We're here at Mobile World Congress 2019 in Barcelona.